It is now time for member statements. And I recognize the member for Toronto, St. Paul's. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I met with Toronto St. Paul's community member, Eulis Guerrera, chair of Sickle Cell Association of Ontario and Alvin Merchant. Both men live with sickle cell anemia, the first gen genetically recognized disease. Sickle cell is a severe illness that impacts red blood cells. It affects the quality of one's life, can destroy families, and is often fatal. While sickle cell disproportionately impacts Black and South Asian communities, it is a disease that affects people of all races. As Eulis and Alvin emphasized, they've lived one after one painful day after another, never knowing if a visit to the ER might be their last because of the inconsistent care they receive. A sickler may enter the ER looking good on the outside while internally their bodies are waging war. By the time a doctor or nurse decides to believe a patient is in crisis, it's often too late. We must support the calls of the Sickle Cell Association of Ontario for June 19th to be formally recognized as Sickle Cell Day across Ontario, for recognition of sickle cell as a disability, and for increased awareness in schools and workplaces where sickler absences are often perceived as laziness rather than illness, and for a universal hospital protocol ensuring sicklers receive appropriate care everywhere they go. I proudly stand with Eulis, Alvin, and sickler communities to bring these life-saving demands to light. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to pay tribute to the Highway of Heroes Tree Campaign. They were here today and joined us for a fantastic reception over lunch today. I'd like to thank them for bringing awareness to a vital cause and to some remarkable work that they've done paying tribute, a living tribute, to the over 117,000 Canadians who've made the ultimate sacrifice. I'd like to thank the fantastic staff, Mark Cullen, Michael DePontier, Tony Giovanni, Donna Cansfield, Mike Hurley, David Turn Turnbull, and of course, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Boychen, who joined us for this great reception to highlight the remarkable work they're doing and to highlight the remarkable work of this cause. Mr. Speaker, the province of Ontario has committed $1.1 million to this important cause. They're close to their goal of $10 million. They're at $4 million. There's a long way still yet to go, and I'd like to thank them for joining us today. And of course, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Boychin, who joined us, I'd like to thank him for his service. He stands for so much more. He stands for all that's great about Canada, our shared values, and our country. Thank him for his service, and thank them for joining us today. Thank you. The member for London Fanshawe. It's always an honour to rise in this House and speak on behalf of my constituents of London Fanshawe. Today, I would like to dedicate my time to share a story of the Roger family who live in my riding and are struggling to find adult support, residential living accommodations for their son, Patrick and Sean. I met Teresa and Kevin and one of their sons in my office recently. Sean is 29 years old and Patrick is 23. They both have autism. Sean and Patrick have been on a wait list for residential support housing for 23 years. They have challenging behaviors that their mother, Teresa, as the primary caregiver, has to manage. As aging parents, it has become increasingly hard to cope with the difficulties of raising their adult children. Kevin's job takes him out of town four days a week, and Teresa is left on her own with health issues after sustaining a fall. Teresa said, quote, We are faced with nothing but the grim and hopeless news that about lengthy wait lists for residential services with no end in sight. As parents, we cannot believe that there is such a lack of MCSS-funded residential services for adults with development disabilities. We worry even more with the current government and assume adults with development disabilities living at home with their aging parents are not a priority. This is not acceptable to us, end quote. I am proud to use my time today to bring to light the significant challenges that families like the Rogers have endured trying to get proper care and housing for their children. This government needs to make it a priority to help families like the Rogers access care and housing for, sons, for their sons that they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. 
Member Statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to invite members of this legislature, viewers, and all Ontarians to take part in some of the great activities available in Perry Sound, Muskoka this March break. March brings the beginning of maple syrup season around Ontario. Local groups have come together to create the Muskoka Maple Trail to help you plan your visit. To find places to see the trees being topped, the sap being boiled down, and to taste the delicious sweet syrup and candy, visit muskokamaple.ca. This year, the winter weather has provided many other great winter activities across Perry Sound, Muskoka. Enjoy a day of alpine skiing at Hidden Valley Highland Ski Area, where all 15 runs are open and in great shape. If cross-country skiing is more your speed, plan to visit Georgian Nordic Ski Trails uh, north of Perry Sound on Highway 124 or the Gravener's KOA or Bracebridge Resource Management Centre. Arrowhead Provincial Park north of Huntsville offers a variety of activities with cross-country skiing, snowshoe trails, a wonderful 1.3-kilometer ice skating trail and a brand new visitor centre. Johnson's Cranberry Marsh near Ballow offers another skating trail as well as Han Pocky rinks and wagon rides. Snowmobile trails are also in great shape across the region. But remember, no matter how wintry and cold it has been, ice can always be dangerous, so make sure you know the local conditions. For an indoor activity, don't forget to check out the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame in Perry Sound. I hope everyone comes to visit Perry Sound, Muskoka this March break. Member statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. I want to share a story about a family in my riding of Sudbury. Uh, Julia, Sean, June, and Chaz. Uh, June was diagnosed with severe autism spectrum disorder and developmental delay when she was two and a half years old. Uh, her psychologist recommended that she receive a minimum of 20 hours of IBI therapy a week, and June's treatment in full would cost approximately $55,000 a year. And while on the wait list, June began therapy privately. Uh, her parents, Julia and Sean, worked 10 to 20 hours above their full-time hours just to cover the cost of this therapy, but they were still only able to afford about 10 hours a week. The family, as you can imagine, speaker, is under significant financial and emotional stress. And with the government's introduction of income testing, their effort to provide for June is going to put them at a higher income bracket, and that will mean they're going to receive less financial support. They still won't be able to provide June the 20 hours a week that she needs to reach her full potential. Honestly, Speaker, Julia and Sean would rather wait. They'd rather wait for an equitable needs-based funding model, one that ensures children receive the support that they need, instead of punishing families. And I have a responsibility, like all we do as MPPs, to bring stories like June's to the legislator. Her family and many others across the province need the government to listen to their concerns. And I will continue to stand with family speakers and fight for solutions that will ensure that children like June receive the therapy that they need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Streetsville. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I had the opportunity to address the Life Sciences of Ontario's annual Celebration of Success Gala. The event provided a wonderful opportunity for our life science sector to come together and recognize individuals and companies who steer success right here in Ontario. Ontario's life science sector plays a significant role in our economy, contributing more than $50 billion to our GDP and $2 billion in provincial tax. In my riding of Mississauga Streetsville, also known as Pill Hill, over 400 companies provide more than 15,000 well-paying jobs to the people of the GTA. Across the province, one in eight Ontarians is currently employed in a job connected to the sector. Our government is making Ontario open for business and open for jobs. High-value innovation sectors such as the life science sectors are providing these good jobs. But something I would like to talk about, which is exciting, that I'm working on with Life Sciences Ontario and the Mississauga-based pharmaceutical company. I'm pleased to have in the house today Dr. Jason Field, President and CEO of LSO, and Charlene Nicolapile, Manager and Public of Government Relations. Welcome. Dr. Jason Field and LSO and the pharma industry are initiating a new scholarship program in 2019 that will aid young students aspiring to have careers and contribute to the life sciences sector. Mississauga represents a strong backbone to the sector now and into the future, providing great STEM students and access to good jobs. Thank you to you and your team for your hard work and dedication to the recognition and advancement of the sector and to the people of Ontario. Welcome to the legislature. 
Member statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Over the last few weeks, I've had the chance to speak with the great residents of Brampton who are affected by the recent changes to the Ontario Autism Program. They share their stories with me in my office, how this will negatively impact their children and their families. One of my constituents, Sandra, has a son who is eight years old and has autism. He is currently in service, but after the proposed changes, he will have to be transitioned to a public school. Schools are not ready or adequately equipped to deal with the influx of children with special needs. The grandson of another Bramptonian, Deborah, is on the severe end of the spectrum, and his parents will not be able to keep him at home after the proposed changes. She is worried about what the future holds for her grandson and herself as well. Now, these are just a few of the countless stories of families who will be left high and dry thanks to the proposed changes to the OAP. My constituents are very concerned with the situation. Schools are not ready for these children to be taken out of therapy. Schools do not have the resources to support these children, and parents are very concerned about this government's neglect for children with autism in this province. These children and their families need and deserve better, and I hope this government, Mr. Speaker, will listen to the stories of these families and the service providers and make the necessary changes to ensure that no children are left behind. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As most of us are already aware, the Chinese, Tibetan, Vietnamese and Korean communities recently celebrate Lunar New Year on the 5th of February. According to Chinese tradition, the Lunar New Year symbolizes prosperity and good fortune, and is one of the most important days of the lunar calendar. It is the cause of the largest yearly migration of tourists, as people flock to celebrate this holiday with their loved ones. It is also a very old tradition one that has been known to have been observed for thousands of years and still continues to be. As we bid farewell to the Year of the Dog, we welcome the Year of the Pig. The significance of the pig is that it represents honesty, hard work, and peace. Mr. Speaker, I also had the honor and privilege to co-host a Lunar New Year event in my riding along with the Member of Parliament of Markham Unionville, the Honourable Bob Saraya. The event was well attended and included government officials from all levels, most notably our Premier, Mr. Doug Ford. Events like this, Lunar New Year, should remind us of the importance of our prosperous culture mosaic and the celebration of our diversity as a province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Excellent. Member Statements, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. Mr. Speaker, I recently received an email from a constituent of mine, Aaron. He was at a local hospital in the emergency room. He said, and I quote, I was somewhat appalled that there were large numbers of patients in the emergency room and many people standing because there were no seats. I feel that there has to be a better way, unquote. Aaron, I assure you, there is a better way. Ontarians elected our government to put an end to hallway health care, and we've taken a major step forward by unveiling our plan for transformational change. The People's Health Care Act sets out our government's vision for patient-centred community care through the creation of Ontario health teams made up of local health service providers working as a coordinated group. And we will also ensure better and more connected services on the ground for patients, caregivers, and their families through the integration of multiple provincial agencies and specialized provincial programs into a single agency called Ontario Health. Mr. Speaker, it will take time and hard work but our government is committed to ending hallway health care and getting our health care system back on track. Thank you. These are member statements for this afternoon. Reports by committees.